This morning, we're revisiting an author who, in his first book, managed to convince readers that trees love their saplings and behave more like family units than chunks of wood. Today, he's turning his focus on the animal kingdom. The Inner Life of Animals is Peter Wollebin's take on the hidden emotional lives of animals. See those goats on the cover? Well, they are actually his goats in real life, and they are three of the many four-legged creatures that he is writing about. Today, we're talking hedgehogs that dream, roosters that lie, horses that feel shame, and so much more. And Peter is back in our studio to explain. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to start actually at the end of the book because you, you, you point out that your goal with this is not to anthropomorphize animals, which we do plenty of in society, but it's to help us understand them more. Um, and you say that they experience happiness, gratitude, grief, love. How did you go about measuring those things? Um, I'm not a scientist. Um, I've uh, made many experiences while keeping animals, but I've talked to scientists. We have a uh, cooperation between the University of Aachen and uh, my forest district and so on. I'm reading scientific paper, very boring, but <laughs> interesting, <laughs> a lot of good facts. Yeah, and so it's, it's a good combination in this book, yeah. Okay, so Peter, let's, let's go back to, uh, we're going to have go to a few examples, <clears throat> but I want to go through what is your, your life like on a daily basis with these goats? <laughs> Yeah, they get first breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And then the horses, and at, at last me. So, uh, yeah, we do everything for the animals, and uh, that makes me go out, uh, if it, whether it, it's a rainy day or snowy or sunshine. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, they drive me to go out into nature, and that's perhaps the best out of it. So you mentioned the goats and you mentioned the horses, but let's also talk about this lying rooster. You <laughs> say that you have an example of how roosters can intentionally lie. Well, what did you observe and how did you conclude this? Um, yeah, we have uh, the, uh, our rooster, uh, uh, his name is Fridolin. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely but old fat that's man. That's my middle name, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Means old and, fat uh, man. And, and, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he likes to have sex some here and there. Yeah, it's, oh, okay. okay. It's, it's something human. Yeah, Continue. Okay. <laughs> and uh, But the hens don't like because it's, it's a little brutal. It, he jumps into the back and bites in the neck feathers and so on. Yeah, okay. It's something like sadomaso, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the hens don't like it. When they open the door in the morning, they run out and uh, flee the Fridolin. And she tries to catch them, but he's a fat old man. Yeah. Right. So um, he, uh, but on the other hand, hand he's a real gentleman. When he finds uh, something, uh, some food, he scratches a little bit, and then, uh, then he makes a deep sound, and the hens come, and he takes a step aside and let them feed first. But uh, sometimes, yeah, when he likes to have sex, uh, he pre pretend to find something. Uh, he, he does a little bit with his feet and then he makes a deep, a deep voice and then the hands come and then there's nothing, nothing but Fridolin. <laughs> so it's, 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 like, it's like men who um, pump up their social media profiles in an effort to attract women online. Uh, very similar. Uh, okay, let's talk about these horses and you claim yeah. that they feel shame and embarrassment. What did you notice in your own horses? Yeah, for example, um, when uh, I work with, with one of our two horses, uh, and uh, she's she, uh, and the boss, the, the the horse which is in the ranking higher, uh, watches it. Then, uh, for example, when I say, "Oh, you don't make your lesson right. Go back, go aside, and we start again," and the, and the boss, the boss horse is watching my horse, then then it feels shame. Yeah, it bends aside his uh, it's, it's head and it's chewing a little bit. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's typical for for this shaming, and uh, then I say, ah, you crazy guy, you don't criticize someone while the boss is watching. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so, you, so it's interesting. So in your home, you, you, you all, you've had these animals for a while, so you already understood, you had an understanding of sort of their, their, their social hierarchies, yeah. and then you went on to observe uh, what you thought were uh, clear signals of emotions and interactions yeah. and applied yeah. those to those social structures. Yeah, right. And, uh, and um, when we think about animals, you do, we think uh, we are working on our, our mind and animals are working on emotions. But uh, and our, the most important thing in our life are emotions. And the emotions are drivers of instincts. And when, when you see, for example, love, it's, it's our, our highest valuable uh, emotion. You can see this on goats, for example. The goats uh, you, you showed on the, on the, on the cover. Uh, they, they feel mother love. And you can fee, uh, find in their blood also oxytocin, the hormone which drives even our love. And you can find this hormone, surprisingly, even in goldfish. 
We don't know what, what, it, what it does in goldfish, but perhaps they love each other, perhaps. I don't know. There, it, yeah. there, Peter, there are so many interesting uh, yeah. anecdotes in this, especially the one that I highly um, invite people to go find in your book about how um, pigs know each other's names. Yeah. Yeah, if that's interesting to you, and it certainly is to me, uh, pick up this book. Peter, thank you so much for coming in. It's the second book. I anticipate a third. Yeah. All right, so when that comes out, I hope you come back and join us. Thank you very much. All right.